Hey everybody, so this anticipated releases video is going up so late <laughs> that by the time I'm actually ready to edit it, edit it because of, you know, other things that I had to get posted, um, I have since discovered a bunch of new releases um, that are coming out in the first few months of the year and there were enough of them that I felt like I should actually film like a second part of this. So what I did do is I put them in order in this group, um, like chronological order of when they're going to come out, but I'm not going to go through and like insert each clip in my original video um, in order to make a complete timeline, if that makes sense. Um, so apologies for that, but I'm gonna try and run through these pretty quickly. Um, yeah, this'll, maybe this'll teach me to be more on time with my anticipated releases, but I highly doubt that. <laughs> um, so the first one I wanna mention is The Mermaid in the Mill Pond by Lucy Strange. Oh wait, is there enough room to put up the picture? There we go. Um, this is pretty short. This looks like it's a novella. It's only 120 pages and um, it looks like a historical fiction, um, a middle grade book that has a mermaid in the mill pond. Um, I don't know, it just looked really interesting and I think, I don't think I've read anything from Lucy Strange before, but I feel like she has several books that I would be interested in or that I would enjoy, so this is another one and that comes out on January 6th. Um, then I also have a book coming out on January 11th, that is, <laughs> I have a book, somebody has a book that I am talking about, um, and that is by, that is Medusa by Jesse Burton, which is illustrated by Olivia Lomanek Gill. Um, I've heard good early reviews for this one, this is a retelling of Medusa, um, which I just think is, it'll be a really interesting story, I think it deals with, um, a, like, messy or even toxic romantic relationship, like, it takes that view of the original story, which I think makes sense, um, and it's described as a dazzling feminist retelling of Greek myth, so I think that sounds really good. Okay, I am a little confused because it looks like it may have come out late last year. Maybe it's just getting published in the U.S. early this year, I don't know, but I think the U.S. release is January 11th. Then on January 25th, I have From Salt to Sky by Adrienne Lee. Um, this looks really interesting. It mentions like Scottish folklore. Um, it's it, One of the comps is Wuthering Heights with a Scottish folklore twist, which sounds really interesting to me. I like Wuthering Heights in spite of everything, <laughs> um, so I'm intrigued by this. And it just looks like it's going to be really dark and atmospheric. There's a, a stranger with a mysterious past, um, and it looks like this is going to be a book in a series that is by a bunch of different authors, um, but they're not novellas, which I feel like is usually the case. This looks like it's a full-length novel, um, and yeah, I, I think this is an indie title as well, so excited for that. It just looks really interesting. Um, then, I think I told you the date for that one. Um, then on February 1st, I have Beautiful Little Fools by Jillian Cantor, and I saw this title and I'm like, wow, one of the only lines that I remember from Great Gatsby, which I actually really liked. Um, I'm not a fan of The Great Gatsby. And sure enough, this is a Great Gatsby retelling that focuses on the female characters, um, Daisy Buchanan, Jordan Baker, and then it also adds a female character, um, Catherine McCoy, who is a suffragette, um, fights for women's freedom and independence, and especially for her sister, Myrtle Wilson, who's trapped in a terrible marriage. So if you know the original story, um, I'm interested to see how that works out with what happens with Myrtle in that book. Um, I don't know if that part is going to be changed. Um, it looks like this is going to be a pretty, like, bittersweet or dark retelling, but um, that kind of makes sense, honestly, given like the subject material and the characters it's following. Um, but I'm really excited to see this take, like that is so focused on the women of the story, um, because I, that's one of the, <laughs> I think that's one of the only ways I could actually enjoy The Great Gatsby. So yeah, this one and Anne-Marie Macklemore's retelling that is coming out later in the year, those are like the only ones that I can think of that actually might make me care about Great Gatsby. So excited for that. Uh, then I have to get a shout out to my friend Julia from Shakespeare and Such because I think she added this one on Goodreads and this was the first I had heard of it, but it sounds great. Um, this book comes out on February 15th and that is Rima's Rebellion, Courage in a Time of Tyranny by Margarita Engel. Um, it says, a coming of age story from award-winning author Margarita Engel about a girl falling in love for the first time while finding the courage to protest for women's right to vote in 1920s Cuba. All of that sounds fantastic and that's really all I really need to know. Um, and I believe it is based on like true stories of, um, it looks like they're called Las Mambisas, fierce women veterans who fought during Cuba's wars for independence. So 
I really love that. Um, always excited to to read more about suffrage from women of color um, or like focusing on women of color so I'm really looking forward to that one and it's quite short as well it's like 200 pages. I also have a nonfiction book that comes out on February 15th that is Aggressively Happy, A Realist's Guide to Believing in the Goodness of Life by Joy Marie Clarkson. Um, I have followed her on Twitter for a while, I don't know if she's on Twitter right now actually, um, but I've liked her stuff I've seen online and so I'm really happy that she has a book coming out and it sounds like something that I will need. Um, I've said in previous videos that I feel like I'm kind of a sad optimist <laughs> um, because when it comes right down to it I do believe or I do want to believe that basic that basically there is more good in the world than bad but it's hard to remember that right now especially so I'm excited to see what Joy Clarkson has to say about that. Then I have a picture book that comes out on February 22nd as well um, and this is Bear Tree and Little Wind, A Story for Holy Week by Matali Perkins, illustrated by Koa Lee. Who I've not read any of Koa Lee's books that they've illustrated but I have seen their style and it looks gorgeous so I'm excited to read one. Um, and Matali Perkins, I really really loved her nonfiction books steeped in stories so I'm pretty much excited to read anything from her. Um, I definitely want to get to other books by her as well. And this is a picture book um, about Holy Week, um, which starts on Palm Sunday and it goes through Easter. And I just think this sounds really wonderful. It's going to be a good way to, I think, prepare for Holy Week. Um, and it comes out like a week before Ash Wednesday, um, which kind of makes sense, I think, because Ash Wednesday starts Lent. So probably they're thinking people might want to get it before then. Um, but yeah, looking forward to that one. Then I also have A Thousand Steps in Tonight by Tracy Chi. This comes out March 1st. Um, and this one looks really interesting. I mean, obviously I'm interested in it or it wouldn't be on this list. Um, I'm going to be interested to see early reviews for this one. I have not read anything from Tracy Chi yet, but I have several of her books on my TBR that I'm really excited for. I've heard good things about her work. It looks like this is a Japanese-influenced fantasy and it's about a girl who um, is cursed and begins to transform into a demon. So she embarks on a quest to reverse the curse and return to her normal life. Aided by a thieving magpie spirit and continuously thwarted by a demon prince, Miyuko must outfox tricksters, escape demon hunters, and negotiate with feral gods if she wants to make it home again. But with her transformation comes power and freedom she never even dreamed of and she'll have to decide if saving her soul is worth trying to cram herself back into an ordinary life that no longer fits her and perhaps never did. So I'm kind of on the fence about this one. Um, you guys know I don't tend to enjoy stuff about demons, but there have been a few exceptions. Um, like actually another Japanese inspired fantasy series is Shadow of the Fox, which I loved. Um, obviously these are not going to be similar stories. I'm just mentioning that as an example. And so yeah, I'll be interested to see, um, especially that last part of the summary. I'm not sure how I'll get on with this one. From the end of that synopsis, it sounds like the main character maybe starts questioning if she even wants to be um, transformed back into a normal human. So curious to see how that goes, because again, I'm not the biggest fan of stories with demons in them. So I'm not sure how I'd feel about that part, but I am interested to see early reviews about this one. Okay, so this last one is Squire by Sarah Alfagi and Nadia Shamas. And this is a graphic novel. Um, it looks like a bit of a longer graphic novel. It says 336 pages. It's about a girl who has dreams of becoming a knight. And it looks like she maybe does succeed, but it's not really what she imagined. Um, Aiza must navigate new friendships, rivalries, and rigorous training under the unyielding Jennifer Hende, all while hiding her or new background. As the pressure mounts, Aiza realizes that the greater good that Beit Saji's military promises might not include her, and that the recruits might be in greater danger than she ever imagined. Aiza will have to choose once and for all, loyalty to her heart and heritage or loyalty to the empire. So I just think that sounds really, really interesting. Um, sounds like there's going to be some really great like thematic discussions. So I think that sounds great. And I think those are all of my additions. So I will send you back to past Kara. <laughs> Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I am here with my most anticipated releases for January through March of 2022. You might notice the setup is a little different, and that's because I am doing a little bit more casual version of this video. Um, I wanted to get this up before it was too late. It's already close to the end of January, um, and I just have not had the time or energy to like put together my notes that I always work from. Like. I know it sounds funny to say that that takes a lot of time and effort because I don't tend to include much information with them, but going through all of those like and, and compiling that list of notes that I work from, it actually does take a lot. So instead, we're just gonna chill and hang out and I have my computer in front of me, so that's why I'm gonna be looking this way. And I'm just gonna go through and highlight some of my most anticipated releases for the first quarter of the year. Um, so hopefully this is still somewhat helpful or interesting. Um, this is not going to be all the books I'm excited about. This is just a selection. And even with that, as always, I have quite a few to talk about because um, I read a lot of different genres and age categories and kinds of books and all of that. As I said before, the amount of information I have about these will vary, <laughs> but that keeps it fresh, you know? Um, okay, so starting off on 
January 4th, um, I have a short story collection or an anthology that is Serendipity, edited by Marissa Meyer. Um, and the other authors are Elise Bryant, Elizabeth Yulberg, Leah Johnson, and Marie Mackamore, who I love. Sandia Menon, Julie Murphy, Caleb Rorig, Sarah Winifred Searle, and Abigail Hing Nguyen. Um, and this is a collection of stories all based on different romantic tropes. Um, I have never read an anthology that Marissa Meyer edited before. I think this is her first one. I enjoy her as a writer. Also, pretty much anything that Anna Marie Mackamore has a story in, I'm going to read. Um, and there's other authors I'm excited about as well. So I'm excited for that one. Um, also on January 4th, I have Salam with Love by Sarah Sharaf Beg. Um, this is a contemporary romance featuring a Muslim main character. I believe it takes place during the month of Ramadan. And it sounds like our main character ends up discovering a lot about her faith. She spends some time with her extended family that she doesn't know as well. Um, it talks about a possible relationship, like a romantic relationship. And so far this one has really good own voices reviews. Um, obviously that's not like a guarantee or anything because people, like representation is a very individual thing, but so far, um, the Own Voices reviews seem to be very good, and one in particular, she says, we actually got to see two types of romance in the book and they were both halal. So that sounds encouraging. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this. It looks like it's going to be really sweet, but also have some really important topics, which obviously is a combination I love. Um, and then I also have Ain't Burnt All the Bright by Jason Reynolds, illustrations by Jason Griffin. This comes out on January 11th, and this is a book that is primarily illustrations with some very, very sparing text. Um, and it's by Jason Reynolds and his best friend, so that's really cool. Um, Jason Griffin is his best friend, and they collaborated on this project to talk about what it's like to be Black in America right now. Um, and the kind of theme for the collection is about breath um, and oxygen and, like, all of the connotations of that. And I have loved everything I've ever read from Jason Reynolds. January 11th, we have The Siren of Sussex by Mimi Matthews. This is the first book in her Bells of London series, which is a series of historical romance. Um, I think this is one of her first traditionally published titles, which is exciting. And her books don't tend to have any explicit scenes. Um, and this one is about our main character, well, our two main characters. One of them is a woman who um, pretty much sees her only way to getting a successful match um, or to supporting herself is by racing horses, which she's really good at. Um, so she decides to, I think, win a prize or like try to win a prize for horse racing, but she needs a really good habit, like a writing habit. So she goes to a half Indian tailor who is like really, really good at uh, designing and creating these habits. Um, and they end up forming a relationship. And I believe the book is going to deal with the prejudice that he faces and um, the complications of their relationship. And yeah, I think that sounds good. This one also has very good reviews so far. I also have The Bone Spindle by Leslie Vetter. This also comes out on January 11th. And this is the first book in a series, it looks like. And it is a um, a take on the Sleeping Beauty fairy tale. And we have two female main characters. I've heard that this is just like a really fun fantasy, like almost a little bit of like adventure fantasy. So it's kind of gender swapped because they're going to, they're trying to find like the, the Sleeping Beauty, like the Sleeping Prince. Um, and one of the two female main characters um, has a romance with an enchantress. So there is a female-female romance. And then the other female main character, I believe, ends up with the prince, um, has some some romance there. So this just sounds really fun. I've heard good things about it as well. And y'all know I love fairy tale retellings and this one sounds really fun. Next, I have a couple of picture books. Both of these are courtesy of Ashley from Bookish Realm. She is great if you wanna keep um, up to date on kid lit and picture books and all of that kind of thing. Um, I will link her down below, of course. And the first one I have is Crowned with Glory by Dorina Williamson, illustrated by Shalene. Rodney. This comes out January 25th, and this just looks like a really beautiful celebration of natural hair, um, like black girl joy, and just the cover looks gorgeous, and from what I've seen of the illustrations, it looks beautiful, so I think this is going to be lovely. And then the other picture book I have in January is Love in the Library by Maggie Takuda Hall, illustrated by Yas Imamura, and this one is set um, in an internment camp during World War II, and it follows two Japanese Americans who are, of course, unfairly imprisoned there, and um, they end up falling in love through the library. And it sounds like it's going to be a really good balance of like love and joy and finding joy, um, while also talking about this really horrible period of American history that still doesn't get um, talked about enough. So I think that looks really wonderful also. I have a nonfiction book, Go Back to Where You Came From and Other Helpful Recommendations on How to Become American by Wajahat Ali. Um, this one comes out January 25th. Um, I follow him on Twitter and I just really admire him. I really like him. And this sounds like it's going to be 
a humorous but also really thoughtful and well-written take on what it's like to be Muslim in America, um, what it's like to be a descendant of immigrants in America. I just think this looks really fantastic and again I already know that I like his writing and his perspective. I have Sofia Acosta makes a scene by Emma Othogoy. Um, this comes out January 25th and this is about our main character Sofia um, who she is Cuban and her parents were um, or are incredibly talented ballet dancers and Sofia is not really good at that but she loves designing costumes and I think it's about um, her her finding her passion, her like continuing to pursue that. Um, it's about community and her family and um, family expectations and I just think this looks really lovely. I love stories about ballet. I have The Red Palace by June Hurt. This comes out January 25th as well. Um, I really enjoyed The Silence of Bones by this author. I still need to read her other novel, which I own, um, but this is a another kind of murder mystery. Um, I believe there's a romance subplot as well. Um, we're following our main character who I think she is... She's a palace nurse um, and she gets, um, she becomes embroiled in court politics when someone murders four women in a single night and the prime suspect is Hyun's closest friend and mentor. Determined to prove her beloved teacher's innocence, Hyun launches her own secret investigation. Um, she ends up, I think, partnering with the crown prince and I believe they end up working together on this investigation and I'm really excited for this one. I've heard a few like lukewarm reviews so far but I'm still holding out hope because I really enjoyed this author's first book. I have kind of a wild card here that is Pandora by Susan Stokes Chapman. Um, it's So the, the idea of a Pandora retelling is really interesting to me, but it sounds like this is a kind of historical fiction take on it that doesn't necessarily incorporate mythology. Um, it says perfect for readers who love The Binding, which I haven't read yet, and The Essex Ser Serpent, which I also haven't read and don't intend to. <laughs> so we'll see, but I just, I don't know, I'm intrigued by this. Okay, then moving on to February, quite a few again. Um, on February 1st, I have Wildwood Whispers by Willa Reese. Um, let's see, one of the blurb parts says, a heartwarming novel of hope, fate, and folk magic unfolds when a young woman travels to a sleepy southern town in the Appalachian Mountains to bury her best friend. Um, so yeah, it's, she goes to um, kind of fulfill her friend's last wish, which is to be buried in her, I think, hometown. So it's about grief, and then the main character also ends up learning more about this town. Um, I think there's, like I said, folk magic, secrets, getting to know this woman who everyone calls a granny who seems to have expected her, a salvaged remedy book filled with healing tinctures and salves, the strange connection she feels to the Ross homestead and the wilderness around it. In fulfilling her promise, Mel might end up finding home and remain connected to Sarah in a way she least expected. Um, yeah, so that sounds really interesting, very atmospheric, um, sounds like it's going to explore community and family and grief, so I think that sounds really great. Um, also on February 1st is Omar Rising by Isha Saeed. I can't tell if this is set in the same world as Amal Unbound, um, but I believe it also has to do with the importance of education. Um, I really enjoyed that other book by her, so I'm looking forward to this. So our main character is Omar, who gets a scholarship to a school um, that provides an opportunity to improve his station in life, and he's the son of a servant. Um, so he knows that this is a really big opportunity for him, but it turns out that scholarship students aren't allowed to join in any of these clubs or teams that he wants to be a part of. And not only that, they have to earn their keep doing menial chores. At first Omar is dejected, but then he gets angry when he learns something even worse. The school deliberately weeds out kids like him by requiring them to get significantly higher grades than kids who can pay tuition, making it nearly impossible for scholarship students to graduate. It's a good thing that in his favorite class he's learned the importance of being stubbornly optimistic, so with the help of a tight-knit new group of friends and with the threat of expulsion looming over him, he sets out to do what seems impossible, change a rigged system. I just think that sounds fantastic. Um, and I don't know if I said this, this was also on February 1st. Also on February 1st is And We Rise by Erica Martin. This is a novel in verse set during the civil rights movement um, in the 1950s and 1960s in America, and I love novels in verse. I think this sounds really fantastic. It looks like there's also going to be um, a lot of photographs that are included, and I, yeah, this just looks really, really great. Also, I love the cover on this one. Um, and it looks like it's going to be quite short as well. It's listed as only 160 pages. Um, but yeah, I think this will be fantastic. This Woven Kingdom by Tahara Mafi. This comes out also on February 1st. Um, this is the first in a fantasy series and there's like a whole write-up on it, but honestly just knowing that she has like a Persian-inspired fantasy series, it's described as clashing empires, forbidden romance, and a long-forgotten queen destined to save her people. Like this just sounds really good. Um, I have really enjoyed Tahara Mafi's fantasy books I've read, furthermore in Witchwood, so I'm really excited that she's writing another one. Um, yeah, I, I think a lot of people are talking about this one, so you've probably heard about it, but I'm excited. 
Then one of my most anticipated releases, I think for the year, I can't believe we're finally getting it, is In the Serpent's Wake by Rachel Hartman. This is the final book in the Tess of the Road duology, which is kind of a spin-off or a sequel duology to um, Serafina and that sequel. And yeah, I just, I read, it's been a few years now since Tess of the Road came out, but I loved it. Um, it was just so beautifully written, like the, the world building, like the character development. I think the themes and the emotions were just beautifully conveyed and I am so excited to be getting this like finale. I'm sure it'll just like fill my heart up and break it and then fill it up again. Um, I can't wait. <laughs> And that one is also on February 1st. Finally, moving on to a different date, we have on February 8th, Dream Annie Dream by Waka T. Brown. Um, this is about our main character, Annie, who loves musicals. Um, and she's really, really excited to get a role in the production of The King and I. And then she starts hearing grumbles from her mostly white classmates that she only got the part because it's an Asian play with Asian characters. Is this all people see when they see her? Is this the only kind of success they'll let her have? One that they can tear down or use race to belittle? Disheartened but determined, Annie channels her hurt into a new dream, showing everyone what she's made of. Like, this just sounds amazing. Like, I I love stories about theater and musicals, and I think it is so important that we are getting a middle grade book that talks about typecasting and the lack of roles for people of color. Like, this just sounds really, really amazing. Um, I'm so excited. This is probably another one of my most anticipated releases for this quarter or for the whole year. This just sounds brilliant. Mirror Girls by Kelly McWilliams. This also comes out February 8th and this is a historical fiction book um, that deals with, the, uh, I believe, the Jim Crow era. Um, and it's about two sisters, twins, and one of them is raised as white and the other one is raised as black. And I believe it has to do with them learning about their history, family secrets. It looks like there might be um, some ghost aspects. I've heard pretty good things about this one as well. Also on February 8th, I have Castles in Their Bones by Laura Sebastian. Um, I don't need to know that much about this one. All I really know is that there are three sisters who are trained from birth in espionage and seduction um, to travel to three distant lands to marry three princes and enact their queen mother's plan to rule from sea to sea. When they arrive, each sister discovers her task is not so simple and their mother's motives may not be what they seem. Um, I just love that concept, like the idea of these three sisters being raised to like marry and take over kingdoms and then like finding that it's more complicated than that. I think that just sounds really, really interesting. So excited for that. Also on February 8th, I have a contemporary, You Truly Assumed by Lala Sabrine. Another really, really stunning cover. This is about three black Muslim girls um, who create a space where they can shatter assumptions and share truths. Um, it, the book deals with Islamophobia and it's also a lot about solidarity between girls. Like I just think like the sound of this friendship just is amazing. And I believe we get I believe we get all three main characters perspectives, which that sounds really great as well. I forgot to mention one of the most important parts of this of the summary, um, and that is that one of the girls starts a blog um, about being Muslim. That's how she ends up making friends with the other two girls, and a lot of other Muslim teenagers end up going to the blog as a place where they can feel safe and be themselves, um, but then there's like pushback against it, of course, and um, it's about the three of them standing together, and I just think this sounds incredible. Then also on February 8th, I have a book I am very excited about. That is Ophelia After All by Raquel Marie. I am like, I can't believe that a friend of mine is getting published. This is a contemporary romance that follows our main character who I believe it's about her realizing that she's bisexual because she's always had crushes on boys before, but then she ends up spending a lot of time with a girl who she ends up really liking and it's about family and identity and I, I'm so excited for Raquel. Like this is, congratulations. This is amazing. I'm so excited. Um, also another stunning cover and I just can't wait to read it. On February 15th, I have Bitter by Kweke Amezi. And I actually had not heard about this one until I saw Sonali from the Melodramatic Bookworms video um, talking about anticipated releases. And I believe this is a prequel to Pet, um, which I read in 2021 and I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And I, so yeah, I think this is kind of a prequel because it's set, um, I think during the period where people were like revolting against these monsters. So Pet is set when supposedly there are no monsters anymore. Bitter, I think, is set um, while all of this is happening. And I'm not normally a big prequel person, but I think this one sounds really good. So excited for that. I guess I can stop saying that. Obviously these are anticipated releases, but you know how we always see, say things like that. February 15th, I have A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. This is the first book in a series. Um, I don't really remember. There's like a really long description on this one and I'm not gonna like go through it, but just know that Rebecca Ross is always one of my most anticipated authors, despite the fact that I have not read anything from her. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to fix that soon, hopefully. But yeah, this is a fantasy novel. It looks like the setting is um, an island that is run by, or like kind of affected by these capricious spirits. Um, and I think our two main characters, Jack and Adira, have to work together to try and placate them. Um, and they end up 
I think growing a lot closer. I don't know. Like there's a whole long synopsis that I'm clearly not reading right now. Like I'm not like reading out to you guys, but just know that it sounds really good. I feel like a lot of people have been talking about this one too. So you probably have heard it already. Then on February 22nd, I have The Justice of Kings by Richard Swan. This is a book that sounds really interesting. So we're following, there's like two main characters, I think. One of them is an emperor's justice who, you know, he goes around the empire, um, trying cases, upholding the law, I don't know, and his like really young assistant who is like a young woman, like I think she's like a teenage girl maybe when she starts helping him, she's like a scribe or something. Um, did I just make that up? I can't see anywhere, maybe I just made that up, but he has like a young woman who's helping him and um, the book is structured as her as an old woman, I think talking about this case that they had, um, which normally I don't like flashback stories, like frame narratives like that. I find them very annoying, but this one sounds really good. I know Alan really liked it. And something that is very encouraging is I have heard that the author does a really good job of writing from the perspective of a young woman, um, which some male authors can do, but it's nice to have more of those. So I'm excited for that. On February 22nd also is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. This is one where I can't decide if I'm going to get the UK or the US cover because both of them are stunning. Um, but I've been excited about this one for ages. I feel like this is also one of my most anticipated releases for the year. Um, every year there is a girl who is sacrificed to the sea god as the bride in the hopes that one day the true bride will be chosen and end the suffering. Um, and so there's one girl who is really beautiful. Everyone believes that she's going to be the chosen, the one who's chosen to be sacrificed. Um, and our main character, Mina, goes instead because her brother is in love with this girl so she doesn't want him to lose her she doesn't want her to have to do this so she goes instead and i think then it's about what happens when she gets swept away to the spirit realm a magical city of lesser gods and mythical beasts mina seeks out the sea god only to find him caught in an enchanted sleep with the help of a mysterious young man named Shin, as well as a motley crew of demons, gods, and spirits, Mina sets out to wake the sea god and bring an end to the killer storms once and for all. But she doesn't have much time. A human cannot live long in the land of the spirits, and there are those who would do anything to keep the sea god from waking. It just sounds so good. Really excited for that. I think I might have actually read a long time ago. I think I might have actually read um, a, a myth or a story that was that sounded kind of similar to this, so I don't know if it's based on that, but I'm excited for this. Daughters of a Dead Empire by Carolyn Tara O'Neill. This comes out also on February 22nd, and this is a really interesting take on the Anastasia story. So we have two main characters. One of them is Anna, who's a really wealthy girl who narrowly escapes the massacre of her entire family in Yekaterinburg. Um, desperate to get away from the Bolsheviks, she offers a peasant girl a diamond to take her as far south as possible, not realizing that the girl is a communist herself. With her brother in desperate need of a doctor, Evgenia, who's the girl she asked for help, accepts Anna's offer and suddenly finds herself on the wrong side of the war. Anna is being hunted by the Bolsheviks, and now, regardless of her loyalties, Evgenia is too. Daughters of a Dead Empire is a harrowing historical thriller about dangerous ideals, loyalty, and the price we pay for change, an imaginative retelling of the Anastasia story. I just think that sounds really interesting. Um, it sounds like it's going to deal with these, um, these questions of loyalty and ethics, and I imagine there's going to be some kind of friendship that develops between these girls, um, some kind of connection. Okay, and then finishing up with March. <laughs> We're almost done, you guys. Um, I can't see... Okay, March 1st, uh, we have Honestly Elliot by Gillian or Gillian McDunn, and this one is a contemporary. It's about a boy who I think he may have ADHD and he's just dealing with a lot. Um, his parents are divorced, his dad is remarrying, his best friend has moved away, um, he has a new half-brother. Um, there's also something referred to as the incident, which cost him $600 and likely his plan to attend a culinary sum summer camp. Will a surprising partnership with star student Maribel on a major class project be the solution to all that is stacked against him? Or will her hyper-focus on the assignment, plus her hard to deal with celiac disease, complicate things even more? Like, it sounds like this book is going to deal with a lot of important topics, and I, like, I feel like sometimes people say that books can take on too much. Obviously, I haven't read this one yet, but a lot of kids do deal with a lot of things, like not even just kids, people in general. A lot of people have periods of their life where they are dealing with like things on top of things. And I just think this sounds really, really interesting. I definitely want to read more books that have ADHD rep. Um, and I don't know if I've read a book that has a main character or a an important supporting character that deals with celiac disease. So I just think this sounds great. Also on March 1st, I have Edgewood by Kristen Ciccarelli. This is a standalone fantasy, um, kind of like an atmospheric spooky fantasy. Um, and I've read one book by the author that I didn't love, but I've heard really good things about her later books. And the premise of this one just sounds fantastic. So I'm definitely going to give this one a try. Um, our main character, like her grandfather disappears and she um, ends up finding herself drawn to the court of the fabled wood king himself. She makes a deal, her voice for her grandfather's freedom. And then she ends up realizing that this curse is much bigger than herself. Um, 
she gets the help of Hawthorne, an enemy turned reluctant ally who she grows closer to each day. Emmeline sets out to not only save her grandfather's life, but to right past wrongs and in the process discover her true voice. This just sounds really great, so I'm excited for that one. Then I have one I am tentatively excited for. <laughs> that is Travelers Along the Way, a Robin Hood remix by Amina May Safi. So you guys know I have really enjoyed Robin Hood retellings. That's like a very specific thing that I apparently often love. But the reason I'm nervous is because I've only read one book by Amina May Safi before, and I loathed it. Like it was my least favorite book I read that year. Um, so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> but this sounds fantastic. It's set during the Third Crusade, and I think it's going to be... Um, I think it's going to deal with that. There's like a whole synopsis that sounds really, really interesting, but I'm not going to read the whole thing right now to you guys. Um, but I am, I am tentatively optimistic. It looks like this one's gotten um, good reviews so far, early reviews, and this is part of their remixed classics line by Fuel and Friends. So nervous, but excited. Then I have Turning by Joy L. Smith. This is about a main character who is a ballerina. Um, it's also, she's also a black girl. And I just, I think it's so great that we're starting to see books that deal with how, how ballet is still a very like white dominated field and talking about the difficulties if you are a person of color in the ballet industry. Um, so I think that in itself is really exciting, but the premise of this one also sounds really great. So Jeannie was a rising star on the ballet stage, but then she had a really um, horrible injury and now she is wheelchair bound. And I don't think permanently because she starts going to a physical therapist and realizing with the encouragement of her friends and this boy that she meets who's going to the same physical therapist as her who was a gymnast and he had a um, really severe injury. She starts realizing that maybe her dancing days are not over, but it sounds like she's dealing with a lot of other things going on as well. Um, cause this says, but healing also means confronting. Confronting the booze her mother, a recovering alcoholic, has been hiding under the kitchen sink, the ex-boyfriend who was there the night of the fall and won't leave her alone, and Jeannie's biggest, most terrifying secret, the fact that the accident may not have been so accidental after all. Um, so it sounds like it's gonna deal with a lot of heavy topics, um, including the intense pressure of ballet. Um, I just think this sounds really good. And I don't know if I said this, but this one comes out March 1st as well. Uh, then on March 8th, I have The Ogress and the Orphans by Kelly Barnhill, and Kelly Barnhill is, have I read? I've read one thing by her that I really loved, and I keep knowing that I'm going to like her other stuff, and I just haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, she's one of those authors for me, but this sounds really wonderful. It's a fantasy story, and our main character is this young girl who ends up befriending this kindly ogress at the edge of town, um, but then a child goes missing, and everyone blames the ogress. So I think it's about um, our main character like standing by her and I think it's about friendship and not judging people and I this sounds like it's going to be really lovely while also dealing with really heavy ideas which is something I love and something that middle grade fantasy often does with aplomb um so I'm really excited for that one then I have a recent addition to my TBR and that is Camila Knows Best by Farah Heron um this comes out on March 8th and this is a romance that is an Emma retelling Emma by Jane Austen but with a Bollywood twist and this just sounds so fun. Emma is not my favorite novel by Jane Austen, but I'm finding it's one that I can enjoy in retellings. There's a puppy shelter that sounds adorable. Um, also, of course, because it's an Emma retelling, it's about our main character um, setting up other people, like trying to fix their love lives and not paying any attention to her own <laughs> or not thinking that she needs help with her own. Um, I just think this sounds really fun. And did I say this came out? Yeah, March 8th. Also on March 8th, I have Lake Lore by Anna Marie Macklemore. It does not even matter what, what the book is about. I will read and love everything by Anna Marie Macklemore that they ever write. Um, also, I'm pretty sure that we're getting three different books by them in 2022, which I feel so blessed. Um, they basically have three spots on my most anticipated releases list because I highly anticipate everything they do. Um, but yeah, this is about two non-binary teens. It involves um, a world under the lake and I don't really need to know that much. I feel like this is an unpopular opinion. This is not my favorite cover from them. I really like the bottom part, but like, I don't know, something about the figures, like the way the figures style looks against the like lake and the mountains. It just doesn't, I don't think it flows as well as some of their other covers, but I love the color palette and everything. Um, and a lot of people love that cover. Anyway, needless digression, but I'm excited for this, unsurprising. Then on March 8th as well, I have Great or Nothing by Joy McCullough, Caroline Tongue Richmond, Tess Sharp, and Jessica Spotswood. This is a Little Women retelling told in four different perspectives. Um, one of them is in verse. That is the one that Joy McCullough is writing, who obviously wrote one of my favorite books. No, I have not read anything else from her yet, despite owning her other books. I don't want to talk about it. Um, but this looks like it's going to rip my heart out, and I'm very excited. It's set during World War II, so it's, like I said, it's a retelling. Um, 
and I, I'm just really looking forward to it. I'm really hopeful that this is the book that's going to sell me on Amy March as a character because she is one of the most obnoxious characters I've ever read in a book and I'm pretty sure the reason I hate her is because if I if I had to pick a March sister I'm most similar to I think it'd be Amy and I, I think like with Marianne Dashwood I just am not ready for that kind of self-knowledge yet um, but this looks absolutely wonderful. I'm sure I'm going to sob. Um, yeah, excited. Looks like a great book. <laughs> Ready to cry. Then speaking of retellings of classics, on March 8th as well, we have One for All by Lily Lineoff. This is a Three Musketeers retelling, but with female characters. I am so excited. Um, an own voices gender bent retelling of the Three Musketeers in which a girl with a chronic illness trains as a musketeer and uncovers secrets, sisterhood, and self-love. Truly, I don't even really need to know anything more than that. I'm sure that the rest of the synopsis is also fantastic, but I'm already sold. On March 8th also, it's a big day for releases, is A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft. Um, I have not read her debut, even though I own it, but I have a good feeling about her as an author for me. Um, this is a, like an atmospheric fantasy, I think, and our two main characters are both trying to hunt down this magical creature that they need for some reason, um, but they end up teaming up begrudgingly. And of course, as they spend more time together, maybe the team up is not so begrudging. <laughs> Y'all know what's gonna happen, I'm excited. <laughs> um, but they end up in this like creepy old house, I think, on the outskirts of town, so it just sounds like it's gonna be really atmospheric. The romance sounds good. Um, I think like the the atmosphere, I think I already said atmosphere, but like the tone and like the spookiness sounds like it's gonna be just the right amount for me. Um, and I'm, cu I'm curious about like the magical creatures as well, so this sounds great. I also think this cover design is like really interesting. I really like it. So looking forward to that one. Okay, March 15th, we have Being Mary Bennett by J.C. Peterson. This is a pre Pride and Prejudice retelling, of course, that centers on Mary Bennett, which I'm very excited for. Um, I like that we're starting to see more of those. There's one that I have really loved. There's a couple I've really enjoyed, but there's one that I adored that was the other Bennett girl. Um, so I'm excited to read another one. I think this is a contemporary retelling. It is a truth universally acknowledged that every bookworm secretly wishes to be Lizzie Bennet. A less acknowledged truth is that Mary Bennet might be a better fit. Like, a mood already. I know some people don't like Lizzie, so I understand, but I just think this sounds really great. It looks like it's about Mary trying to reinvent herself, getting help from her bubbly roommate, and trying to, like, get out there and, like, meet people and kind of break out of her shell, I guess. Um, I am, I'm excited for the like self-growth aspect. I hope it's not one of those where, I don't know, it's like you have to, <laughs> you have to disguise yourself as an extrovert in order to be happy kind of thing. So I hope it's not like that, but otherwise this looks really good. On March 15th, I wanted to talk about Dating Dr. Dill, um, which is by Nisha Sharma. This is the first book in her If Shakespeare Was an Auntie series, um, which is a series of romance novels based on Shakespeare plays, which I, cannot wait for. I think this is a retelling of Taming of the Shrew, maybe? Um, which I think is a play that needs retelling. <laughs> yeah, it's a romantic comedy inspired by Taming of the Shrew, features a love-phobic TV doctor who must convince a love-obsessed homebody they are destined to be together. Like I said, I've been excited for this one since this series was announced, I think like a couple years ago now, so I'm excited we're finally getting one, and like I love Shakespeare, so <laughs> this is this is something I'm gonna be excited about regardless, but I also like the idea of the premise. So our main female character, Karina, is a romantic, um, but she ends up getting in this fight with Dr. Prem Verma on a TV show, and um, it, it's kind of like bad publicity for him because he's trying to raise money for a clinic. So then like Karina's aunties go to him and they're like, we will fund your clinic if you convince Karina you're her soulmate. Um, so yeah, that just sounds really interesting. Another romance, and this one I believe I heard about from Ashley at Bookish Realm, is Safi Sheldon Feels Good as Hell by Taj McCoy. This comes out March 22nd, has a plus-sized main character, um, and I think she is like renovating her house. Um, and then it turns out that the person, the contractor she hires, um, is the same sexy stranger she unintentionally offended by judging based on appearances. Worst of all, Savi can't seem to go anywhere without tripping over her ex and his latest upgrade. Savi begins to realize that maybe she should have started her renovations the other way around, beginning with how she sees herself before building a love that lasts. So I think it's going to be about self-love, and this sounds fantastic. Obviously there's going to be a romance as well, um, and there's a lot of other things going on, but I just read a little part of the blurb, but I think that sounds really good. On March 29th is A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lin. This is the first book in the series, and it's our main character um, is, she feels responsible, or she was responsible for accidentally po uh, poisoning her mother with the tea that she gave her, and so she's been haunted by that grief, obviously, and that responsibility, um, and then she hears of a competition 
for finding a like team making expert so she travels to the imperial city to compete the winner will receive a favor from the princess which may be ning's only chance to save her sister's life but between the backstabbing competitors bloody court politics and a mysterious and handsome boy with a shocking secret ning might actually be the one in more danger um i love this cover and i remember hearing about like a tea and tea heavy tea inspired fantasy like a, a year or so ago when this was announced and i've been excited about it ever since also on march 29th is one of my most anticipated releases probably and that is a symphony of stars by barbara kloss this is the third and final book in the gods of men trilogy which i have just been loving so much like i i am so ready <laughs> to read this and to find out how everything goes i love these characters i am so invested in the world um some some big things are happening obviously and shout out to my friend Hana for getting me into this series um because it is tragically underhyped also a really stunning cover on this one and then also on march 29th is ordinary equality the fearless women and queer people who shaped the u.s constitution and the equal rights amendment by kate kelly and illustrated by nicole larue um i think this is pretty much what it says in the title yeah the fact that the equal rights amendment still hasn't passed is humiliating um but i think this book is going to be a really important like source about it a reminder um i really like it looks like from the description that it's not just going to be highlighting the really well-known um people in the women's suffrage movement like alice paul but also talking a lot about um lesser known women especially women of color like mary church terrell phyllis wheatley so it, it looks like it's going to span the women's suffrage movement all the way up through like the present day and i have been excited about this project for a really long time um so i'm glad that it's finally getting published or it's like its release date is here um, also wanted to give a quick mention also on March 29th to Give Your Heart to the Barrow by Sarah K. L. Wilson. This is like the third or fourth book in a series I have not officially started, <laughs> but I know I'm gonna love it. So it's like a Bluebeard retelling and um, I just think I'm really gonna like this author's writing. I sampled a little bit of it and it sounds fantastic and um, I just wanted to give this one a mention. <laughs> like reminding myself that I should like catch up on the series for when this book comes out. And then finally, I think the last book I have to talk about today is A Forgery of Roses by Jessica S. Olson, which comes out also on March 29th. It's about our main character, Myra Whitlock, who's an artist whose portraits alter people's real life bodies, a talent she must hide from those who would kidnap, blackmail, and worse, in order to control it. Guarding that secret is the only way to keep her younger sister safe now that their parents are gone. But one frigid night, the governor's wife discovers the truth and threatens to expose Myra if she does not complete a special portrait that would resurrect the governor's dead son. Desperate, Myra ventures to his legendary stone mansion. Once she arrives, however, it becomes clear the boy's death was no accident. Someone dangerous lurks within these gl these glittering halls, someone harboring a disturbing obsession with portrait magic. Myra cannot do the painting until she knows what really happened, so she turns to the governor's older son, a captivating red-headed poet. Together they delve into the family's most shadowed affairs, racing to uncover the truth before the secret Myra spent her life concealing makes her the killer's next victim. Describes it as a gothic fantasy murder mystery, which just sounds amazing. Um, yeah, I, I just love like the premise of this. That sounds great. So I'm very excited for that one. And I think that is finally going to do it for my first quarter of most anticipated releases. Um, I hope this like more casual and chatty style still worked for you guys. Let me know if you are also really excited about any of these or let me know a book that you're just really looking forward to in the first quarter of the year. We have a lot of good stuff coming. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye. We're going to wait for the airplane. <laughs>